Hello folks and welcome to another edition of Blinkers Off. Hope it was a good weekend for you. Chris Barsby is with us tonight. How are you, Chris? Very well, thanks, David. Big show coming up. You've got plenty of news too. Absolutely. North, south, east and west. But first up, one is always prone to making New Year's resolutions or New Year's wishes. So here's mine for Queensland Harness Racing in 2012. And not only to race in Queensland, but to the industry itself. Hey, there might even be a chance the two can work together, but maybe that's a wish for another time. Wish number one, and this is number one on everyone's list. Get the Deegan Albion Park situation sorted out. The Brisbane City Council, the local community and many in the industry don't want Deegan. So why is RQ doggedly pursuing it? And to those who want to keep Albion Park as the home of harness racing, come to the table to work together. Wish number two, find another piece of land in a big hurry to compensate for the loss of parklands in September 2013. Reality check, it's January 2012, 19 months and ticking. Wish number three, racing Queensland to spend some decent money on Redcliffe, which keeps chugging along and doing the right thing, but never seems to be rewarded. Wish number four, appoint a permanent chief steward. Can RQ expect people to seriously believe it has taken since last April to find a suitable candidate and still can't find one? Wish number five. Get a think tank together, lock them in a room, and don't let them come out until they've discovered some tangible ways to increase local harness racing turnover. RQ keeps sending out dire warnings about the turnover situation. Hey boys, you're in charge, so start doing something about it, and I'll put my hand up to be part of the think tank. Wish number six. Seriously revisit the bonus scheme feature race schedule. And I say to RQ, these people who have spent many hours... Drafting proposals don't want more money, but want a fairer de deal. And they might just know a little more about the industry than yourselves, with due respect. There's six wishes. Optimistic? Yes. But let's face it, Queensland Harness Racing is currently in a poor state. We need everyone working together to at least achieve half of these wishes. Getting one run on the board would be a start. And just a postscript to that, Mark Oberhardt in the Courier Mail this morning has levelled a serious accusation against Racing Queensland that they have not included fixed odds betting turnover in their overall uh, harness racing turnover. It's a story we'll be following for you during the week. Speaking of harness racing Queens, or racing Queensland, we start the news with the news about racing Queensland stewards. Well, it's been uh, a busy time and it's going to be even busier as we uh, get into this new year for 2012. Uh, two instances last week down the Gold Coast, two unsavoury incidents now under investigation. So that's another two to add to a pile that's uh, growing bigger by the day. So it's going to be a hectic time for racing Queensland stewards. OK, we'll follow that up. Talk in motion and Shane Gray. Well, talk in motion was a scratching on Saturday Saturday night at Albion Park. She had a little bit of a rash on her chest. Uh, she's a fairly thin-skinned mare, so uh, they opted to pull her out. She is still being set for the Ladyship Mile. Shane Graham, however, he's out for another mm. month. He copped a, uh, a month suspension at the Gold Coast last Friday night. Another whip infringement rule there. And that is another big talking point in harness racing right now. The, uh, the whip policy, something needs to give there. The other question is, where is all that money going from uh, the fines that are handed out? Caesar's folly, I know, was a scratching as well on the weekend. Yeah, he bumped himself on uh, on Thursday afternoon, took a little bit of skin off on one of his legs. Nothing too serious. If the race was tonight, he would have been able to go around. But they just erred on the side of caution, so expect him to step, up, uh, step out in the next week or two. She's no fake. She was brilliant as a two-year-old. We're looking forward to seeing her as a three-year-old. What's her progress? She's definitely going to trial before she starts this campaign. Campaign, probably later this week, if not this week, it'll be next week, but she's just about ready to go. So we look forward to seeing this brilliant filly back in action. You've labelled your next news item, which trainer? About what? Well, this is one of just many I'm, I'm starting to hear on, on the grapevine that uh, many are considering moving interstate. Uh, as you just outlined, it's a fairly dire situation here in Queensland. I know one Queensland trainer that has purchased a property uh, south of the border. Maybe that is just the first of many to come, so we'll just have to monitor that situation, but it's not looking good. No names, no pack drill. No. Okay, Lanacost uh, finished down the track at, Mooney, at uh, Middleton Friday night. Yeah, had a very high white uh, blood cell count. Uh, further tests are going to be carried out, uh, if not today, my spies tell me. So uh, at this point in time, no Bendigo, no SA Cup, obviously, this weekend. Those mm. two races were considered. Hopefully, Shepherd and Cup Saturday week. Sushi, Sushi was very good at the same program? Yeah, absolutely. No Ballarat Cup for him, no Hunter Cup. Next start for Sushi, Sushi is expected to be the four-year-old Bonanza on Hunter Cup day. Connections are now 
now aiming at that uh, consecutive win record, which is currently held by San Simeon at 29. So that's the next big target for Sushi Sushi. Some news on Courage to Rule. Courage to Rule has been in Brisbane uh, since the Winter Carnival. He was getting set for the Australasian Breeders' Crown, had that mishap. He's been doing all of his rehabilitation here in Brisbane, but he's expected to go back to New Zealand to trainer John Green and Brian Hughes later this week. And Luke McCarthy taking all before him. He's cracked 100 in New South Wales. He's off to New Zealand this week. Yeah, he's got a, a wish list for New Zealand this week. He's going over to, uh, you know, bolster his stocks even further. One of those owners that uh, is keen to, uh, you know, add to the, uh, the the firepower he's got currently in Sydney is Brisbane-based, and it's not the, uh, the owner that most would expect. And uh, just on that... He's had a, a, a wonderful start to his season, but when you consider or when you analyse his figures to Mark Purden, Mark Purden doing exceptionally well. Probably had half the winners, but his stakes are just about $50,000 shy of Luke McCarthy. Big week coming up, WA Cup Friday, SA Cup Saturday, and of course the Harness Racing New South Wales investigations continuing as well during the week. Plenty of news here on Blinkers Off. Let's take a break. Back with more shortly. Welcome back to the program. Our stable profile tonight is on a very promising young trainer, Shane Sanderson. I had the chance to visit Shane at his Gatton property late last year. Shane, uh, it bears repeating, we've been out here before on other television shows, how this all came about through this property and this operation. Uh, you had to get some cash together, you had to look after a family, so you went to the mines to get the money. Yeah, yeah, basically we did, yeah, a few years ago now, I think 2001, went up there and spent a few years up there and um, saved as hard as we could and um, yeah, got enough for a bit of a start. Good money but tough work. Yeah, yeah, tough hours more or less, you know, the sort of night shift and 12 hour shifts, but um, yeah, it was, it was not too bad. You've been here now, what, four and a half years? Yeah, four and a half years, yep. And, 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 and you're proud of your complex, and you obviously keep developing it? Yeah, just sort of add to it all the time. I think as most people, when they're setting up, it sort of is a bit of a gradual thing. So, um, yeah, we're, you know, we're pretty well set up now. We just need a couple of other little things, and we'll be right. You've always been considered as one of our up-and-coming young trainers, and uh, in 2010, 2011, you had a great season. Just tell us about some of your highlights in that season. Um, oh, what did we do there? 2010. Yeah, no, we had we got. Um, yeah, um, yeah, he, he won a, quite a few. I think um, Maywin Tuns might have won the couple of races in Sydney. Um, and basically, yeah, we had a good season. Um, a few of the horses run through their grades a little bit, and um, yeah, it was it was a good um, good year. So where we are now, 2011, 2012, we're about a quarter way through the season. It's fair to say things aren't as bright as what they were 12 months ago. How has that happened? Oh, I mean, with 2010, 2011, a lot of those horses we had then were on good marks oh. and, and we sort of won, won them through and they sort of them probably still got some of them horses here now and they shouldn't be and um, they're, they're on their mark. The, uh, my better horses, Maywin Tons and Maywin Jasper, have just had niggly problems um, and setbacks all the way through, so that's sort of prevented them from racing. And um, and also, it, we sort of got a lot of two-year-olds coming through this year. So, you know, with, with all the young ones coming through and the problems with the older horses and uh, the, sorry, the problems with the better horses I've got, oh. and the older horses being on their mark, it's just just been a steady couple of months. Let's talk about Maywin Jasper. It doesn't look bright for him. Uh, give us the background to, to, to what's wrong with Maywin Jasper. Oh, he had a, um, a diagnosed with a throat problem when he was in Melbourne last, and um, he had the operation and everything um, was all looking good. He come back to the races and he, he went bad again. Um, th the throat operation actually was a success, but he's sort of been diagnosed with um, inflammatory airway disease, which is more or less asthma and it's quite severe with him, oh. so um, he's on his last chance now. We've got a pretty severe um, treatment regime with him and um, and if that doesn't work, then there's not much else we can do with him, unfortunately. Maywin Tons, you've always had utmost faith in this horse. You've told me privately, you think that he's potentially a Grand Circuit horse, so you know, you know the horse is better than anyone else. It's a, it's a big call. Yeah, I mean, I thought, you know, Maywin Jasper was in that boat as well, to be honest. Not that I've sort of got the experience or ever, ever had one for that matter, but they just seem to be so much better than anything else I've 
I've worked with and I've got a couple here that have got through to open company and these horses are just totally different to them, you know, they just so much seem so much better. Um, but he's, you know, not without his share of problems too, unfortunately. So um, whether they ever, if he ever gets there is another thing. The best horses often produce the most problems. That's why it's good to have a an older stalwart like Murfak Prince. He's been in the stable for some time and he has been a bloody good money spinner. Yeah, he's been a good horse, yeah. No, I think he's chalked up 15 victories for us now. And... Um, Thankfully, he, he sort of more or less turned things around the, when I was in the mines. I got a group of mates together and we claimed a couple of horses and the first couple I claimed for them were dreadful and, and all but bloody sent, you know, almost busted them. And uh, I think we claimed the apprentice and the syndicate now that they race under is called the Ten Apprentices and he sort of turned things around. And then we, we got Murfak Prince and we just haven't looked back. They, each and every one of them love him yeah. and um, they all flew in actually from all around the country there the other day um, a couple of weeks ago to watch him race at Albion so no, no, they, they're having a good time. And Naomi tells me he's a perfect gentleman around the stables. Yeah, yeah, he's um, yeah, he's, he's a favourite. So, um, he's he's a got a home for life. Yeah, well, if he doesn't get claimed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. You, you have to win Saturday night races to be successful as a Queensland harness racing trainer, there's no doubt about it. I've noticed you, you get a lot of horses from, from uh, the Hunter <coughs> Valley area of New South Wales and you've had good success with them at Albion Park. Uh, the associations with Michael Formosa? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. A couple of years ago when I was in Sydney with Maywin Jasper actually, we, I stayed at Michael's place and got to know Michael and his family and um, you know we, we've been back a couple of times since and, and he's been to Queensland a couple of times and um, yeah, he's sort of um, through, through him and, and um, uh, some other trainers there that, that Michael knows, um, they've sent horses up and um, they seem to do a good job, yeah. Good owners are vital, they're necessary in, in the business. Uh, Rob and Pam Essex have really, really got behind you and, and, and made you, but I know another owner, David Greaves, I see that name popping up regularly in the winners list and uh, what's his background? Yeah, Dave, no, he's, um, I think he originally sort of he got into the gallopers and um, he was a mate of my brother's and we sort of got to know him through coming to the trots and you know he, he got into a horse there three or four years ago now an old claimer and um, sort of gone from there and he sort of followed sort of Rob's way and, and we've gone into the young horses with him and um, yeah he's got a lot of young ones coming through now and um, you know it looks like a bit of potential there so yeah no he's a, he's a good owner Dave he's um, very easy going. And speaking of people like Rob and Dave and some of the other owners you've decided on on getting them together, almost like an extended family, uh, and, so, and to, to syndicate some horses, it, it seems a step in the right direction. Yeah, I hope so. Um, just put a few of the, the owners together and um, pool the money and yeah. um, and see if we can sort of target a better class of horse and um, see if we can build it into something. Let's talk about the, the property here. Uh, you, you get the results, so obviously the team's working well together. It's a case of girl power here, mate. Yeah. You're the boss, and we've got Naomi, your partner, now, now married, 12 years. Uh, Nikki works for you, and, and young Lauren Jones, uh, she's uh, helping out and doing a good job. Yeah, she is, Lauren. She um, come over, started coming weekends. Um, she's still at school, and, and I asked her in the holidays if she wanted to do a bit of work. And, um, yeah, no, she drives them good. She's just, I think, finished a mini, mini ponies now, and um, she's going for a driver's licence, so we'll be looking out for her at the trials very shortly. And there's even a six-year-old who sometimes works out here, Abby, your daughter. Yeah. And Naomi tells me she loves the horses. Yeah, she's very keen. One stage there, she was getting up at 5, 5.30, coming out before school, but Naomi put a stop to that. She yeah, she loves it. And what about Ryan? He, they say he's more into the motorbikes. Yeah, yeah, he's more into the motorbikes. But um, he does, you know, he's starting to show a little bit more of an interest, but we sort of don't push him with whatever he wants yeah. to do. Yeah. Looking towards the future, the, 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 the present has been good for you. Uh, as we said, this season, not as powerful as the previous season, but as a, a, a still a young person, uh, you obviously look towards the future and we've got some pretty serious questions to ask in, in this business at the moment, haven't we? Oh, absolutely, yeah. If, if you know, if the things don't, things don't, if there's not some positivity anyway um, coming in the near future, or well, it's not a real good look, I don't think, and, um, it's a bit certainly worrying, especially if you're wanting to make a career out of it. You're a, a trainer who uh, is one of our leading trainers. You get results. Uh, Albion Park and Deegan. What do you think of the Deegan idea? Um, 
Yeah, look, I'm, I'm sort of, it doesn't really matter to me where we race. Oh. I, I was sort of of the opinion, I remember saying it many years ago when I was in Mackay to the, when the board came up there, we, I, I, my opinion, we need to try and derive an income outside of harness racing. We've had Albion Park there for ever and a day and, and we're not deriving an extra, in, you know, a separate income out of it. So in my opinion, it's sort of a waste. Um, if we can either redevelop it to, so that we can, um, you know, make it viable and fin uh, financially viable for harness racing, or um, if if it's better to sell it and use the money and go to Deegan, I, I, look, I don't really know. But whatever option is, we need to sort of um, mm. look at an income outside of harness racing. Yeah, it's very important, and as we, as we say, whether you agree with Deegan or Albion Park, it's just the uncertainty at the moment that, that is, I think, causing a lot of people, a lot of angst. Oh, that's exactly right. I mean, and, and we haven't had that grandstand there for so oh. long now, so, you know, it's it's not the you know the nicest place to take owners and, and whatnot, so the facility at the moment is, is just really um, not up to A1, that's for sure. You've looked a little further ahead. You actually, I believe, took out a, a thoroughbred trainer's licence? Yeah, yep, yep. No, I had a, um, had a horse and he had a couple of starts. I just sort of got a little bit busy with the um, trotters at the, at the same time and... Um, and I just had a, had a little bit of trouble getting somebody to ride him at the track, so I, I just sort of put that on hold. But I, I enjoyed him, and um, it's something that I will sort of um, explore again in the near future, yeah. Did you get any advice from anyone, or was it just you trying your best with them? More or less trying my best, just ask, you know, a couple of little questions, not to any um, any full-time galloping trainers or anything like that, but um, more or less just feeling, feeling my way and just asking the odd person about how to work them and whatnot. Well, we might see the day Miss Sanderson and the uh, winners listed Eagle Farm or Doom in years to come. Oh, it'd be nice, yeah, it'd be nice. Just in closing, we've come the full circle. Um, you worked hard to get where you are now and you're getting the results, but uh, nothing would be uh, possible except for, for your mum and dad, Tom and Desley. They've been great supporters of you. Yeah, oh, absolutely. They helped us get going out here. And, um, you know, mum's even here today helping out and um, dad's at the moment, you know, uh, he's here. He's away at the moment, but he, most times he's here during the week helping me. So, um, no, their, their, their support and, and help's been um, unbelievable. And I certainly, you know, I mean, I couldn't have done it without them. Mm. And just uh, just in finishing, uh, the horse we have to pin our hopes in for Shane Sanderson is May Win Tons? Yes, yes, yep, absolutely. What about the younger ones uh, that, that you've bought at the recent sales, uh, or the, the ones you've got coming now that say are, are two-year-olds? Uh, how are they shaping up? Yeah, a couple of um, handy ones. I think it's, a, I think it's the best crop of two-year-olds I've had since mm. Maywin Tons and Jasper. I'm, I'm not sure if they're as good as them. I just don't know. But um, there's certainly um, there's a couple of handy ones there. A Courage under Firefell goes good, and uh, and a lifetime one. Uh, Dave David Greaves owns them, and um, yeah, I, I sort of got some high hopes for them. Good luck in the future. Thank you. Yes, he's going great guns. He always promised to be one of our best trainers and it's certainly panning out that way. We'll take another break and then come back and look at the highlights from Albion Park on the weekend. Welcome back. Good quality free-for-all at Albion Park Saturday night. Let's have a look at the action. Destreos was the favourite, $2.30. Homeward bound now. Destreos poked the head in front of Artifactor, who's trying to rally. Extreme Stature to the outside. And then our White Knight. Destreos going clear. Extreme Stature's the challenger. Destreos in front, holding Extreme Stature. Pulling clear, Destreos, and he's going to take it out. He did it the hard way, but he got the prize. Destreos from Extreme Stature. Ellie Operative third. Our White Knight only battled over the final stages. Fourth, then Artifactor. Riverboat Star, Atomic Arc, and Pacific Cruiser. Running at the fourth event here at Albion Park tonight, Destraos. Uh, the uh, winning sequence continues for driver Kelly Dawson aboard Destraos and uh, sitting in the best seat tonight, Kelly, uh, another great victory. Yeah, he's just as tough as old boots, you know, the horse will do anything you ask of him. Um, you, know, you can come from behind, but he prefers to be up front, so when we can, why not? He likes a fight on his hands too, doesn't he? He had that tonight, but uh, Extreme Station was coming quickly at the end. He sort of lets him get to him, but with the hood on, he can't really see him, but once he hears him there, he'll keep fighting all day. So that winning sequence continues, as mentioned. Uh, win number 16 or 17 for you as a driver on her today? Yeah, it's getting up there. I mean, it, it's been a great thrill to drive this horse. You know, he's given me many of my highlights. 
one of those highlights was a uh, feature race win a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, it definitely was. Best race, you know, I've won on board a horse and, you know, it was good for him too. It's probably the first feature race he's won himself as well. And of course, that was the, the Lord Mayor's Cup here at Albion Park. The uh, association between you and Australia started through a previous trainer, Kenneth Rattray. Uh, a concession drive on one of his other horses resulted in you uh, uh, being aboard this guy. Yeah, a fair while ago now, you know, I think it was Funny Boy that I started off driving with a claim and then just through other people being unavailable, I picked up a couple and, you know, it's taken a while to get the full-time steer, but, you know, I'm grateful to have it. And, of course, uh, Christina Monty, now the trainer, first and third in this race tonight. Yeah, it's a big effort in this grade, you know, they're all top horses out there. And the operative was in the uh, third place getter, she's got it firing too. Yeah, it's been going really well, it's another nice little throw burst stuff. Congratulations, Kelly, on another Albion Park victory, and let's hope that the uh, winning sequence continues. I hope so. Thank you. Well, you're a good statistician. Destroyers, how many races has he won at Albion Park? I'm pretty sure that's win number 36 at Albion Park. He's been a marvel only. Nicky's mm. Falcon uh, has won more uh, of horses that are still currently racing. But uh, when you consider this guy's doing it at the uh, the elite level, free-for-all level, it just speaks vol uh, volumes for his ability. That was a great performance there on Saturday night. He was most unlucky the previous week, made up for it there. Two eats of an MO. Cullen's Impact ran a short price favourite in the opening heat of $1.50 for trainer driver Matt Nielsen. Cullen's Impact went into overdrive. Shot clear by seven metres at the turn. Commander-in-Chief battles away, then Panasar. White Power Lord can't pick them up. Going strongly, Cullen's Impact. Cullen's Impact clear by seven metres. Commander-in-Chief Panasar. Late on the scene, Dan's Gamble, but Cullen's Impact won well. Cullen's Impact from Commander-in-Chief. Third, White Power Lord. Fourth, a photo. The two stable mates in the photo. Panasar, the inside. Well, after the running of the sixth event here at Albion Park tonight, heat one of the New Year MO Pacing Series. Cullen's Impact records a, uh, another career victory for Matthew Nielsen, the trainer driver from Redcliffe. And Matthew, that uh, kept going with a great record. Cullen's Impact has for your stable. Yeah, no, he's, um, he's got a good record. He came with a good record from Victoria. And um, he's continued on to go well here. Mm. Five starts now for you for three wins, uh, a second place and in the fourth. Yeah, no, he's, he's a sort of he's a quality horse and you expect him in those easier grades to, uh, to do it. He's uh, raced the better horses in Melbourne and that and um, he handled himself well. And you had a crack at a, a uh, country feature race uh, last time out at Redcliffe in the uh, Redcliffe Christmas Cup. For, uh, he was narrowly defeated for a fourth place in behind Lightning Magic. Yeah, he threw a tricky draw that night and um, got a long way back. But yeah, he found the line pretty good and uh, yeah, no, he's come on well. Tonight, when the dust settled, you uh, elected to go forward. Uh, three quarters, uh, the, the final two quarters, in 29-7 home in 28.4, and he felt good up the straight. Yeah, he's good. He only does what he has to. He's um, pretty lazy, so he's got a better coming off the speed. He could have put some more, but uh, yeah, sometimes you can't really. And of course, as mentioned, that was heat one of the MO Pacing Series. The final is next Saturday night. Uh, barrier draw comes out on Monday. Well, that's it's all important for every goal. Um, yeah, if we're going to make a race, we've got to do a bit of it. Well, last but not least, uh, a great supporter of your stable, uh, Steve Clements, has sent uh, this one to you. Yeah, I've had well, I've got a few there for him now. The last three or four months, I've had horses there, with three there. And, uh, they just good quality horses he sent to me, and um, I've driven a good race. Your stable's going well at the moment too. Uh, you're recording uh, quite a few wins around the uh, provincials as well as here at Albion Park. Yeah, that's it. A lot of them are uh, oh, going all right. A lot of them hit their marks again, but um, yeah, just put them in play and on their operations for them. And they'll be good. All the very best, uh, Matthew, for the final next Saturday night with Cullen's Impact and uh, your future endeavours with the stable. Uh, thanks for having me. Yes, he got the job done there, Cullen's Impact, 29-7, 28-4, and Steve Clements are forging a good association with Matt. Absolutely. This race robbed of interest with the scratching of Caesar's mm. folly, but Cullen's Impact is a very good racehorse. Uh, he's done a good job since coming north, of course. He competed during the Winter Carnival, and his uh, runs this time in have been very good, so he was a worthy winner and a legitimate chance in the final next week, although it will be harder. 159.3 was the rate. The reason it will be harder because he's going to come up against Forever Gold and she was a long odds on favourite to take out the second heat of the MO. 
at the turn it's all forever gold she straightens with a good lead back to the inside trying to make some ground was Haystead Ultimo out wide then Zinzan Bramak and Franco turn around but this classy mare returns in style to Queensland and forever gold won easily Ultimo second Haystead good job for third Franco turn around and I catch her for fourth well, it's been a great night here at Albion Park for Kylie Rasmussen the winner of uh, three races she's trained two of those uh, horses Harry Will Do and Forever Gold in the last race. Uh, Kylie, back to race number one, Elza for uh, Grant Dixon. Uh, yeah, he's in a bit of good form again and uh, he's really lovely to sit good horse and went really well tonight. Race number five, Harry Will Do. Uh, you had him since uh, he was a baby. Uh, yeah, Harry came down as a two year old to broken in and um, we were lucky enough he stayed with us and um, he's a mighty horse, really versatile. Of course, owned by the Smith family from up on the uh, Darling Downs. They've raced uh, many good horses over the years. Bistro Lady is one that come to mind. They have. You know, they've had a good run, but I'm sure they've had plenty of slow ones in there as well. But, and Harry's just a really nice runner. He pays his way and, and a bit extra. He does. Over to the last race. Uh, this was a big win for you tonight, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, forever gold back to uh, Australian uh, racetrack. She's had the, the two starts over in New Zealand in uh, the last few weeks, and she returned in fine form. It is, you know, it's nice to get her back and, and just see that she's done well again, you know, because those trips can take so much out of them, but she's obviously, um, you know, come through it really well. Uh, she's got a really good attitude and um, probably an ideal horse to travel with, so no, really good tonight. It's one thing to have a, a great horse in your barn, but it's another thing to have them great first up from a spell, isn't it? Oh, it is, you know, like, she's pretty hard when she went to New Zealand, so it's probably hasn't been too too um, hard for this race tonight. It was bigger feet, you know, getting her ready to go to New Zealand first up. So those two runs in New Zealand, uh, your partner Darren Weeks uh, took her over. He drove on both of those occasions. One of the part owners, Murray Cole, is a New Zealand resident. Well, he, he lives over here now, but he uh, is from New Zealand and all his family is still over there, a lot of family and friends. So um, it was very thrilling, I think, for Murray to take her over and have all the family involved. How did it feel up the home straight the last time round, 27.6? Oh, it, it felt good, I mean, but she's such a casual horse, you know, she really needs something coming at her. She just sort of does only what she has to do. So it's set to be a good final next Saturday night. Of course, that was heat number two of the MO Pacing Series. After that, uh, where to then? Oh, I think we'll have to start looking at some travelling down to Menangle for some of the mayor's races for her. Uh, there's nothing up here until the end of the season with the four- and five-year-old championship, so um, I think that's really the plan now. Congratulations on a, a brilliant return to the Australian racetrack for Forever Gold and congratulations on, on a travel tonight. It's certainly been a stellar night. <laughs> Thank you very much. No, it makes it worthwhile. Winning is expected. Mile rate there faster than Cullen's Impact, 158.3. The horse they clearly have to beat in mm. next week's final. She's outstanding. Forever Gold, one of three great mares that we currently have here in Queensland. Talk and emotion, courageous Annie being the other, but uh, this is a very good mare. Great to see her back in Queensland. She had that two-start campaign in Auckland uh, late last year, performed very well, and she's on song for the Ladyship Mile coming up in early March. Well, if I say so myself, I'm taking a well-deserved break. So you're in the chair for the next few weeks, and I'll see you when you get back. Have fun. Chris Barr's been joining us, and yes, folks, I'll see you in about three weeks' time when uh, we're back with Blinkers Off, but of course Blinkers Off is back again next Monday night. So until then, good night for now.